It's Platt, and today we head to North Carolina. That's next to Platt's Beer of the Week. Hello everyone, hopefully you had a great Christmas. I know I did. Uh, today's particular beer is called People's Porters. It comes to us from Foothill Brewing. Uh, a little background, Foothill Brewing. Foothill is located in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. That is the home of Wake Forest University. If you're a basketball fan, you know that is where Tim Duncan went to college. Uh, Duncan had already been long gone out of town before Foothill had started, but uh, who knows, maybe he likes your beer. Uh, Tim, if you're out there, let us know. We'd love to know what Tim Duncan drinks. Um, like I said, they're located in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Um, the company was, the brewery was founded by current president, and uh, I believe he also had some other partners, uh, a gentleman named Jamie Bartholomew. Hopefully I'm saying the name right. Uh, Jamie got the brewing bug or first started home brewing like a lot of people did in college. He was attending the University of Georgia back in the early 90s. Was planning on becoming an anthropologist, so that's what he was going to school for. Uh, but he started catching the brewing bug. He did finish college and actually started working in, in archaeology or whatever, but he was able to arrange his schedule to the point where he was able to keep a part-time job or a, or a job in the brewing industry. So he's, he was pursuing both passions. Uh, but eventually, as all you home brewers know, this passion ends up taking over. And so he ended up switching to becoming a full-time brewer, working at a couple different breweries, like a lot of brewers. So eventually, the goal is to eventually start your own brewery, which is what he did. And he, uh, in 2004, he'd gotten some investors and a team together, and they started building Foothill Brewing. They eventually opened in 2005, and they started out small. Uh, the first year was only 800 barrels, which is roughly 1,600 kegs. Uh, I can tell you there's some days in the casino where it feels like we go through that much beer just at the casino. So it uh, started off small, but they've uh, continued growing. They're to the point now where they're around 40,000 barrels of production a year, which is, you know, pretty good size. Brewery, um, Foothills has three different locations. They have the downtown brew pub, they have their production brewery facility, which also has a tasting room. And then their third location is kind of a neat story, and I, I did a little investigation to find out about it. It's something called Footnotes. Um, Jamie was contacted by a local uh, bookstore owner in town who was wanting some kind of food and beverage outlet for the clientele that came into her bookstore. Um, and Jamie was also a fan of the concept himself, and... Uh, it got to utilize another passion of his. Him and his wife had been roasting their own coffee at home, learning the whole process of whatever. Uh, I didn't see, but maybe there was a coffee porter or something he'd brewed. But anyway, he was already kind of learning about coffee, so he came up with the, the footnote concept of, you know, home or, uh, you know, kind of in-store roasted coffee, baked goods, you know, get you a scone or something with your cup of coffee, cappuccinos, latte, stuff like that. But they also had craft cocktails and, of course, Foothill's own signature line of beer. They built next door to the bookstore, but they do connect. And so uh, I guess if you went to the bookstore and uh, found a book on brewing beer, you could go <laughs> next door and try some of their uh, beer. But it's a really neat concept uh, and something I've noticed a trend of the coffee world kind of merging with the alcoholic beverage world. Out here in Vegas, there's a chain of uh, video poker bars called The Lodge. And a couple years ago, they built a new location just down the road from me that featured coffee. It was a combination video poker bar and coffee shop. They'd have the regular bar, and you can have your, you know, Jack and Coke and play your video poker. But they also had a barista calendar where you get you a cappuccino or a latte. They had a drive through where you didn't even have to come in the bar if you wanted to grab, you know, your morning cup of coffee. They had you know, uh, finger sandwiches, paninis, again, baked goods, muffins. You can get your morning muffin or whatever. And I thought it was a really neat idea, um, especially if you're in a video poker bar out here. It's normally not the you know, latte and scones crowd, but I thought it was a real neat mix. And I noticed in, sometimes in the mornings when I drive by, they have a pretty good line of cars, you know, driving through for that. So I thought that was neat. Uh, I can tell you in the casinos, a lot of the coffee shops every casino has a coffee shop uh i've noticed now though that they have a bo bottle of bailey's behind the counter or a bottle of jameson's tia maria something like that that people are wanting 
the uh, Irish coffee to start the day off with, and uh, something I found unique, and it's a trend I could see, you know, growing, because the, the flavors are very complimentary a lot of times. Uh, real quick, let's go into some of the beers uh, by Foothill. They're probably most popular, and their flagship beer is called Hoppium IPA, 6.25% alcohol by volume, 78 IBUs. Pretty standard for this style, and, and looking at the... the uh, catalog of beers they have they lean more to the ipa style so you definitely want to kind of come out firing with a, a good solid ipa next one of their beers is called the torch pilsner 5.3 percent alcohol by volume this beer has won gold twice at the great american beer festival for the bohemian pilsner category both in 2016 and 2017 so it's highly thought of uh, something i will definitely keep an eye out for um next is an interesting style of beer that I haven't tried yet, but I've, I've noticed popping up, and I, I probably should go ahead and get it. Uh, this is called Frostbite Black IPA, uh, five point or six point two percent alcohol by volume. This is a seasonal beer they do. Uh, they pitch in a little malted wheat into the grain bill, which again another neat little t tweak that kind of perked my interest. Uh, I'm interested to see how, and I've seen a couple of these black IPAs, how those dark malts play with the traditional hoppiness of an IPA. Now you add a little malted wheat into it. Just kind of intrigues me. I'm not, you know, I'm not a big, I've told you I'm not a big IPA fan generally, but this combination is something I might want to try. Next is a line of beers they do, which I think is a really cool concept, and it's called Craft Happiness Project. It's a line of IPAs. Uh, you know, you'll have a, high, a juicy IPA or a hazy IPA, what have you. But uh, proceeds from the sales of the different IPAs go to different charities. So it's a great way to give back and give back to more than just one charity. You know, hand it around. Didn't really see a list of the charities, but, you know, maybe one went to a school, went to a senior center. But just a real cool idea and good for those guys at Foothill. Last but not least is the beer I've got here, the People's Porter. Uh, this is a year-round standard for them, but they do four other variations on the beer. They have one called Morovian People's Porter. All I know is that the name, it's named after uh, the indigenous people of certain parts of Czechoslovakia, and I think they had a mass immigration to the North Carolina area. Again, I really wasn't sure of the backstory. Stylistically, I didn't read where there was any difference. Maybe they used some Czech malts or Czech hops instead or something, but uh, it's called Morovian Porter. Next, they do a bourbon, a bourbon barrel aged version of the beer, and they get their bourbon barrels from Buffalo Trace. They have a cherry version of this beer, and if you ever had a chocolate cherry porter, they're absolutely delightful. That cherry, cherry and those dark malts just work really well. And last but not least, they have a people porter that uh, is called uh, Cabernet Cafe. Obviously, they're aged in Cabernet barrels, but... Uh, Again, unique variations on this beer. I like the multi beer, so uh, we'll see how this works out. Before we try the Pe People's Porter, though, let's check out the stats. All right, so today I thought I'd talk to you about something I was reminded of the other day, an experiment I'd seen years ago, and I just kind of forgotten about it. And I, I don't know if I've ever talked about it on the channel, so I thought today would be a perfect time. How to properly pour a bottle of beer. Now, we all know, uh, if you're any kind of beer fan, you know there's a proper way to pour from tap. Uh, cans of beer are a little different because it's all dependent on how that mouse designed. And, you know, when you pop the top, you kind of push, push that tab in far enough or whatever. Certain cans are just, you're not going to get a good pour or too much clug in or whatever. So, but bottles of beer... It's, uh, it's still important to uh, pour, assuming you don't drink straight out of the bottle. And I bring this up because I, remember, I was reminded the other day of an experiment I saw, God, probably 10, 12 years ago, by a Budweiser rep. He'd taken three bottles of Budweiser and had three pint glasses like that. First one, just dumped straight in, and just head and foam, and it overflowed. Second one, he went to the other extreme, real careful, took a minutes to pour the thing, not not even a sliver a hit. And then the last one, he poured properly, held the glass at the 45 degree angle, poured it, got you a nice inch or so of head. And he told us to try all three. And I'll be dang, you've got three different beers. 
the one with the foam, by the time you let the foam get down, you know, where you kind of had access to the beer, obviously you'd let all that CO2 out. Um, it just, it, it kind of lost its oomph. The second one, that still was fully carbonated, you still saw tons of bubbles coming out, and that CO2 hadn't been released, you take that first swig and it reminds you again drinking out of a bottle or a can that you don't pour and you're like, oh, I still got all that CO2 in here. I'm going to get the belch. Uh, had a different mouth feel because again, a lot of that CO2 is in there. So it kind of changed that. But, but when you got to that properly poured beer, you knocked it back. And you're like, that's a Budweiser. That's an old school Budweiser, which is kind of, you know, <laughs> what you had in your brain. But it's something I don't get... I don't think people think about it enough. I know even professional bartenders, I, I see guys kind of pour beer in there, you know, they're looking at the waitress or this, that, and the other. And they're, but the, there is a, there's a proper method to it and it does affect the flavor of the beer. So just something I thought about bringing up, something to be cognizant out, of, out there, uh, especially because there's probably a lot of beer being drunk. So that being said, let me pour a proper beer. All right, about 45 degree angle. Now, you don't want to touch lit. You don't want to do that. You want to keep it just above, and you want to pour about an inch or so below the top. Nice, even pour. And about halfway through, you want to start evening up that glass. And that's when you see now we got a nice little bit of head forming. All right, see, that looks beautiful. That... Looks like some you want to drink, which is what we're going to do here. We got a little more than a finger khaki head, but that's kind of what we're shooting for. Oh yeah, plenty of uh, plenty of malt. Um, man, that's just good, well executed beer. Uh, getting ahead of those chocolate notes. A little bit of the, uh, kind of get in the coffee world, a little bit of that coffee espresso. Really nice, though, not sometimes, you know, if you get something uh, too much on that espresso coffee bean kind of, you know, it's a little almost charred taste. Not here. Uh, body, nice, smooth. This is a very drinkable beer. Goes down easy. I'm going to say has kind of a medium to medium minus um, aftertaste so that it doesn't linger with you. Goes down fairly easy, which depending on your point of view, some people will actually like something with a flavor that hangs on more. If you're going to drink something like a porter or a stout, um, you probably do want uh, let taste to linger a little bit more. Um, like I said, medium body, so it's not too viscous. Um, I believe we're at, yeah, 5.5% alcohol by volume. So something you can have a couple of, not going to knock you down. I am really interested now thinking about this in a bourbon barrel. I bet that. And, of course, the cherry, too. That sounds del delightful. So... Solid, well-executed beer. Um, don't pick up uh, much hop flavor or aroma, but this beer is balanced. It's not too sweet. Um, again, you do pick up some of those classic chocolatey notes that you get in a porter. Overall, just a nice, executed beer. Um, you know what? This is a porter that I think you can introduce some of your friends who, who might be a little, you know, if you're trying to get that friend out of the Miller Lite vibe, this might be one of those porters, you know, if they've been adventurous, if you got them to try an amber ale or something with a little more malt, this might be the porter to kind of introduce them to, because I, I, I don't think it would offend, offend a soft palate. Well, I hope you like this video. If you did, please subscribe down below. Also, like the video because it lets YouTube know we're putting out good content. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or beers that you would like me to try, please leave them in the comment section, or you can always contact me on the Twitter page. Till next time, bombs up.